Hi everybody, I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama, and my video today is going to be showing you all about our new caterpillar habitat. I am so excited to show you this. First of all, thank you to my sister and her boyfriend for getting the supplies and building this for us. We had wanted it for a long time. So we paid them to start setting up the, the frame and the ideas and everything. And then once we got it here, my husband did the rest of the finishing touches and then we put the butterfly netting on. So I'm going to tell you how we built it. But first I'd like to tell you why. <laughs> so the reason that we built this is because we are a prime location specifically for monarchs, but also there are other, other types of caterpillars and butterflies around in our climate being in South Texas. And we last year started planting a whole bunch of butterfly milkweed. So every plant that you're seeing down there and in and out is all butterfly milkweed. And they come with different colored blooms, but it's a plant that likes full sun. It likes well draining soil. It's not super particular. And that is the only plant that monarch caterpillars will eat. So that means it's the only plant that monarch butterflies will lay their eggs on. Because of course, when the caterpillars hatch out of the eggs, they're going to eat constantly for a week or two before going and making their chrysalis. And so last year, we were constantly moving caterpillars and trying to protect caterpillars. But number one, caterpillars is they're very simple organisms. You know, they have the instincts to to eat, to poop, and to sleep. And that's pretty much it. They would go wandering off and they would sometimes hurt themselves or they would pass away. And then, of course, there's all of the predators around who try to eat monarch caterpillars. But they're a beautiful striped color, which is supposed to be a deterrent for things like birds and lizards to say, don't eat me, I'm disgusting. But technically, they're not poisonous. So there are animals that will eat them. So I wanted a caterpillar house because it would be a safe environment where we know the caterpillars are going to stay in and then the predators are going to stay out. I'll tell you really quickly before I move on, the tiny little house that's in there, there is a company that we've ordered stuff from since having kids, honestly. It's called Insect Lore. And we've ordered from Insect Lore and also from another company, but they can provide habitats. They can provide different types of larvae or caterpillars. For example, we've had baby ladybugs before, and we've had, these are painted lady caterpillars. So you'll see them on that little white cup. There's, chrysal there's chrysalides, which is the plural for chrysalises, and there's another one down there. So there are also painted ladies, and I have a painted lady who's eclosed. So she's out flying around in here, but she's not quite ready to be released yet. So we use insect lore, and now that we have that butterfly house, we just order caterpillars a couple of times a year. The information on insect lore is great, and I'll say I'm not affiliated with them. I pay full price for all their stuff, but we really like them. It's really fun, and I'll put the link down in the description. Okay, before I start talking about anything else, let's stop and I'll tell you the dimensions of this thing and why it's built the way that it is. So for this space, which unfortunately is a small flower bed that we lost the plants to it in our winter storm, we decided to have it be, it is four feet long, two and a half feet deep, and then four feet tall, not including the stilts. The reason we wanted that size is, like I said, so it would fit in here and then it has a solid wood floor because I wanted to put a ton of butterfly milkweed pots in there. I didn't want to put this on the ground for two reasons. Number one, I didn't want to plant these plants in the ground because as you can see, these are the ones that have just been cycled out. They have been eaten down to nothing. Now they will grow back really quickly. You can see new growth on all of them but caterpillars are basically eating machines. And so I needed a way to be cycling plants in and out, if that makes sense. So as a pot gets eaten down to nothing, I take it out and then it gets a chance to recuperate a little bit. And then I put the fresh plants back in so nobody starves. So that's why I wanted the solid floor. The reason why it's not sitting flat on the ground, and this was something that my sister learned and told me about while they were building it. So I really appreciate her finding it out. You want stilts on a caterpillar house because even though you've got it with the butterfly netting that I'll explain more in a second, unfortunately, really tiny organisms like ants, for example, they can still get in there and ants will come in and they will either destroy the caterpillar or they'll try to eat a chrysalis and it's just a big old mess. So we put stilts on it. It doesn't really matter how tall they are. I think these are about eight inches tall. And what we're going to do is build a moat 
around each stilt. And in the moat, you want to put something that's liquid, but you want to make it a stinky liquid. Water would just evaporate in a few days. And so the suggestions that I've seen are, for example, old flat beer, like gross, or really, really soapy water, like a ton of Dawn in some water, something that's not going to evaporate quickly, but that's going to smell really bad to ants. And it acts as a deterrent. And then you won't have to worry about them getting up in there and causing a problem. So the way we constructed it, I told you the dimensions. We figured it would be easiest for construction if we just made the whole front side the door. And since it's four feet long, I mean, that's a bit overkill. But the whole thing opens. There's my painted lady. She's right there in the corner. See her? And I'll tell you a couple of vocabulary terms as we go. So right now we have, I don't even remember how many chrysalis, chrysalides, I keep saying it wrong. On the cap right there on that cup, we have four. The three that are hanging by strings, there is a way if you find a chrysalis that's been bumped or knocked down, you could try to glue it and hope that it gets saved. This one is the one that has e-closed. So now you can see it's just the skin because that's from this lady right there. And I'll say on butterflies, if you look at the abdomen of the butterfly, if it's just a straight, narrow abdomen, then it's probably a male. If it has a more swollen looking rounded abdomen, I'll see if I can get in there. Then it's a female because she's carrying eggs. And now she's going to go get them fertilized. And different groups of adult butterflies, not the caterpillar stage, but once they are adult butterflies, they will live usually between two and four weeks. So you can see I've got a whole a whole group of chrysalides up there. There's two more up there and there's a whole bunch more. Oh, and there's our pet click beetle <laughs> right there. And for monarchs in particular, like I said, the monarch butterfly will only lay her eggs on a butterfly milkweed. That's the only plant. Now she can get nectar, which is her food. She can get her nectar from a whole bunch of different flowering plants, but she will only lay her eggs on these. I'll show you real quick. I also, can you see? There's two that are up there and there are about six down on the window frame outside the caterpillar house. Because like I said, before we had this built, we had our caterpillars roaming all over the place and we were trying to babysit them and it was kind of like herding cats, except it's caterpillars, right? So I'll show you a couple more interesting things while we're in here. So now I've got chrysalides on the pots. There are four down here in pots. I don't remember how many are up here. And then we have our painted ladies, which there were five on this cup. So it was the four plus one. And then our other cup is over there. Let me zoom in on a couple of chrysalides and show you some different things. First of all, this is supposed to be, I'm sorry that I lost focus. That's supposed to be a monarch caterpillar chrysalis. But as you can see, the coloring on it is not right. That one probably got bumped too hard whenever it fell. And as you can see, we tried using a super glue and gluing it to a piece of string and tying it, but that one looks like it's probably not gonna make it. That one has probably died in the chrysalis, which is really sad. And I apologize, I'll only show you this briefly. That guy was making his button, which is his little silk that he makes when he's gonna hang upside down in a J, and it looks like he didn't make it either. So unfortunately, there's still going to be, hey, sweetheart. Oh, there she goes. There's still going to be a chance that you will lose some of your caterpillars. Wait a minute, that was another painted lady because my first one, she's right here. Whoa, okay, so we're starting to have them. That's cool. So the monarch butterfly can get her sustenance from all kinds of flowering plants, but she will only lay her eggs on these. So if you want to make a caterpillar house or a habitat like this, like I said, I would suggest that you keep your plants in pots, at least the ones that are gonna be cycling in and out so that you can rotate them as needed. And once they're established, they don't have to be watered every day. So it's not a whole bunch of time on your part. But the other thing is you want some butterfly milkweed out around your property because obviously the monarch butterflies can't get in here to lay their eggs because this is protected. So what we're doing is letting them lay their eggs either here or I have some butterfly milkweed planted in the ground up there by the chicken run as well as over in my butterfly pollinator garden, which is up in the front of the house. And then as we find caterpillars, as they're big enough, we grab them and we put them in here. So you can see my little guy right there in the middle of your shot eating like crazy. He's still a little guy. So once they hatch out of their egg, they are going to be eating like crazy for a week to two weeks. And then they will make their chrysalis. And sometimes, I'm trying to see a good example. Sometimes you will have this weird thing I can show you on the Painted Ladies. If you look on that cup that's in the middle of your shot, see the black hairy part on the end of it? And it's like, uh, what happened? <laughs> 
when the caterpillars are growing, they will shed their exoskeleton multiple times, and that's normal. But then when they create their chrysalis, and if you've never looked it up, you should, because it's really interesting. They actually, <laughs> their exoskeleton or, or their skin basically rips on their back. So they, they make their little button so that they stick to the top, right? And they're hanging upside down in a J. And when you see the J, don't touch them, leave them alone. They're going to make their chrysalis. And their exoskeleton or their skin basically rips them open all the way down that J. And they form the chrysalis. And it can take 12 hours for them to do that. But like I said, look it up online if you've never seen it. It's cool. But sometimes the end of that last skin doesn't make it in the chrysalis and they don't need it. They're not in danger, but that's what that funny little furry part is right up there at the top of the chrysalis. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of the ones that I know didn't make it. I'm going to give this painted lady a little bit more time and then see if she's ready to fly. And then I'll explain what we do when somebody comes out of their chrysalis. So when they eat clothes, which is the official name of I've come out of the chrysalis and now I'm a butterfly, then they are going to be just hanging upside down and staying close to the chrysalis for a while. Number one, because they're weak. Number two, because their wings need to dry off because obviously it was like wet and kind of nasty in there. And number three, because they'll be hanging upside down usually because they need fluid to pump through their wings. You'll notice that their wings are usually crumpled up because of course a whole butterfly was folded in there. So they need their wings to straighten out and for their wings to be ready for them to fly. So they need to be dry and they need to be pumped up. And it can take anywhere for a couple of hours to a couple of days for that to happen. But then within three or four days, I would say definitely by four days, you want to get your butterfly out and let her go if you've got her in a habitat. And usually you can just leave it open. Oh, see, she's ready. She's moving now. This is a painted lady. And she is a little bit smaller than a monarch. And if you can see her abdomen, see how it's a bigger, more rounded abdomen? This one's probably a female. Isn't she beautiful? You're showing off. And then once they're being really active and they're crawling everywhere and they're trying to fly and stuff, you can either, like I said, open the door, or I won't really do this to her, but if this is a butterfly, I put my hand flat, and a lot of times they'll just crawl on you, and then I just take her and I hold her, and I go and put her on a protected plant that's close. That way she gets a little bit more acclimated to the wind and stuff before she's out on her own. So we're really, really excited about this house. It's awesome. It's going to last for years. It's really neat. We actually are going to be building a second one that we can put more butterfly milkweed in and also to put some of our food producing plants like our strawberry plants and our tomatoes so that our little creepy squirrel friends can't take our food. The last thing I'll tell you about this butterfly netting that we used for all of this. And as you can see, we have a clear ceiling up here that just has a beam in the middle, but the ceiling is open wall 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 are open and then the door has the butterfly netting on it so there were five surfaces that have the butterfly netting on it the butterfly netting that's used for these houses is very i don't want to say flimsy because that sounds negative but it's very thin and it's very soft so it can be bent and moved and folded what we used here and i'll put the amazon link in the description this was a this is a more firm butterfly netting it doesn't like fold on itself it's it's a lot more stable and what we did is we used the package that I'm going to put in as the affiliate link was, I think it was $18.99. This is April, 2021. So the price was $18.99, I think. And it came with two sheets that are each 10 feet by about six feet, two sheets. And we use less than half of that for this entire house. So we are gonna be able to make another house and have that same package of butterfly netting, but no one's gonna be able to rip into this or anything like that. And then as you can see, we just stapled the heck out of it all the way around. And hardware wise, we did put, as I close this gracefully, we did put just a simple latch mechanism. We're not worried about any animal being smart enough to open this and go in and eat caterpillars. And then of course, because the door is so big, we put some reinforcing hinges on it. But it did not cost very much to get this done. You certainly could use treated wood. We honestly didn't. Um, we're probably going to seal it because we need to seal the chicken coop again pretty soon. And then as you can see, this butterfly we needs to get a chance to breathe because it got eaten down to nothing. And we're gonna keep collecting monarch caterpillars around and protecting them and releasing them back to the wild. So if you have something like this in the comments or if you've ever ordered from a place like Insect Lore, let me know. And if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. But we are so, so, so excited and we hope to show you more videos soon. Thanks.